This is the sixth video on MATLAB basics and concentrates on plotting. So previous videos then have demonstrated how to use basic MATLAB functionality. Next we want to look at how you might form plots and graphs and the key thing is we want plots and graphs which look good and can be exported into reports and other formats as required. So what we're going to do here is give a summary of the main plotting options and we're not going to look really at what advanced users might want but we want to do the basics so that you can give a reasonable plot quickly. So what are the list of the common plotting options? Do you want multiple line plots on the same set of axes? Do you want multiple axes or subfigures in the same figure window? Do you want to be able to control the colour, thickness and style of your line plots? Do you want to be able to add labels to your axes and the title and change the font size and so forth? Would you like to change the domain and range, so that's basically the x and y axis limits? Do you want to add text and arrows to your plot? Would you like to save your figure so you can edit it later? Do you want to export your figure as an EPS or a JPEG or some other form so you can use it outside of MATLAB? So you see there's a number of options and we'll cover most of these fairly quickly so you've got an idea about how to do these things and most importantly you realise they're straightforward. First then, a simple line pot. So what do you have to do? What you need to do is generate two arrays which have the same length, so I could say vectors. So I'm going to generate vectors x and y which have the same length. And then you simply use this command plot x, y and that will plot x on the horizontal axis against y on the vertical axis. So hopefully that's fairly intuitive. So here's an example. So you see I've generated my x vector here which has got six terms and my y vector here which has also got six terms, so you'll notice they have to have the same number of terms, and then I simply use the command plot x, y. Now what MATLAB will do is it will match corresponding elements, so it will match x1 and y1, x2 and y2, and so on, in order to form the plot. So let's have a look at the plot that we get. So here's what MATLAB gives me from that plot. Now if you look very closely, you will see down there we have the point 0, minus 1. Now 0, minus 1 you'll see corresponds to the first elements of x and y. So it's plotted the first element of x, 0, against the first element of y, which is minus 1. If we look at this one, 7, 1, you'll see that's the fifth elements of both of these. So it's plotted the fifth element of x against the fifth element of y. And the final thing to note is the default in MATLAB is it will join the points with straight lines. So I have a point here, a point here, a point here, and so on. And what MATLAB has done is it joined the points with straight lines. How about nominating a figure window? And it's always better to say which figure window you wish to use or MATLAB will choose for you. You might be happy for MATLAB to choose, but there are times when that could be inconvenient. So if you say figure 1, the next plot statement will use figure 1. If you say figure brackets 4, the next plot statement will use figure 4, and so on. If you want the figure window to be clean or blank before you start, then you should use this CLF command. And I would recommend you always do that because that says clean figure. And if you forget to do that, it's possible that you inherit information from a previous set of plots which will corrupt what you want. So I would recommend when you're starting from fresh, always clean the figure before you start. Just good practice. So colours and markers. It's easy to control colours and markers, should that be desired, by adding extra commands to the plot statement. So here you'll see I've put some commands in for you. So the first one you'll notice we've put plot x, y and then I've added this extra command in quotes r. And MATLAB interprets that as I want my line in red. And you'll see the actual command has been written down here. I've said in figure 1 plot x against y in red. And there you go. You'll see the line is now in red. I could have gone plot x, y, and then in quotes g, and g counts for green. And you'll notice 
what I've done here is I've said I want to put that in figure 2 in a different figure so I can see it's different. And there you see the same line plot, but now in green. And the final option, plot x, y, and then I've put b and I've put a plus. And because I've put that plus, it says use a blue and use pluses rather than a line. So if you look at figure 3, you'll notice we have pluses and we don't have lines joining them because we've told MATLAB I want you to mark these points with pluses, not with a line. Now, if you want to see all the different options that you can put for this extra command, what you need to do is type help plot and it will give you a quick list of the different colours you can use and the different sorts of markers that you can use. Adding labels. It's important that plots are presented nicely and clearly. So you can use legend to match lines with colours. X label to mark the X axis, Y label to mark the Y axis, title to give the figure a title. And what you should do is experiment for yourself by putting in labels of your choice and we'll just give some quick illustrations. And the other sorts of thing you can remember is if you type something like help title, it will tell you what you can do with title. And if you type help legend, it will tell you what you can do with legend and so forth. So here's some examples. A typical requirement would be to plot something like y equals tan x and then you want to add labels, a title and perhaps a legend. So here's my code. You see what have I done? I've defined some x values. I've defined my y values as tan x. I've said I want to put this in figure 1 and you'll notice I've used this CLF reset to make sure the figure is clean before I start. I've then gone plot x, y, and m stands for magenta, so the colour will be magenta. And now the keeper is the labelling. Title, we'll add a title, and here you see, I've said title, and I've put in quotes tangent curve because this is a string. X label, I want to use x, and again I've put it in quotes because x label takes as an argument a string. And y label, I've put in quotes tan x. So if we look at that, what do you notice? You notice the figure's now got a title, which corresponds to what I put there. It's got a Y label, which corresponds to what I put there. It's got an X label, which corresponds to what I put there. So the key thing is there's transparency in what's going to appear. And you just need to put it in your code, and it's very easy to change. Here's a different one. Common function, I want to plot p equals x squared plus 3x plus 2. So again, if we look at these commands here, you'll notice it's very similar to before, but I'll just mark the key differences. I've put it in figure 2 this time. I have to find my x values. I have to find p as poly minus 1 minus 2, and that will give me this polynomial. I've used polyval to work out basically p of x, and you'll notice I've used the variable name px to sort of make that obvious. And then I've used the plot statement, plot x2 px, and I've said I want it to be red, and this colon means dots. So that's the straightforward bit. I've now added a title. Now the clever thing about this title is you'll see I've used a string, plot of polynomial with coefficients, and I've added to it the polynomial coefficients. And then I've got a y la an x label x, and then I've also used this clever thing here, poly to string p comma x. And what that does is it's a clever MATLAB command which says if you give me the coefficients of a polynomial, which here are 1, 3, and 2, then I will generate p of x, which is x squared plus 3x plus 2. And you'll see that from what we've got here. So if you look, I said red dots, so the lines in red dots, the x label here was just x. The y label is put in x squared plus 3x plus 2. So it's taken those coefficients, 1, 3, 2, and it's built something that looks like the polynomial. So that looks nice, and I like that. But you'll notice in the title, I've just asked for the coefficients, because I've just said num to string p. So it's just given me 1, 3, 2. So you can see some alternatives. And obviously, pause the video and look at this more slowly if you need longer. So overlaying plots. It's common that we want to have more than one line plot on the same figure. And the easiest way is to compact into a single plot statement. So you'll notice what have I done here? I've said plot x1, y1, comma, and then in red. 
and obviously x1 and y1 must have the same lengths. And then I've added onto the command x2, y2 in blue. And so this, this single plot statement will give me two line plots. So there's some code. I'm not going to dwell on that code at the minute. We'll go back to it in a minute. And the key thing you see here is I've now got two line plots on the same graph. So here's my main command, which puts those two line plots on the same graph. So you see I've said x, y in green circles. So that's this tangent curve. And x2, px in magenta. And that was the polynomial from the previous slide. I've then added my polynomial definition to the title. And you can see that I've basically done that. Where's the um, title statement? Here's, here's the title statement. So that's this statement here. OK, now it's run it all into a line. Um, and when you look at the code later, you'll see that this bit here is actually joined onto there. It's actually a single line. And you'll notice I've changed the color of the title as well. So it's appeared in this sort of green color. So the key thing is transparency. I've given a title. I've given a legend. You can see the legend here. And the way the legend works in MATLAB is it will say, what line did you plot first? And I will mark that with tangent. What line did you plot second? And I will mark that as polynomial. OK, hold on and hold off. In many cases, you may wish to overlay four, five, or 10 or more line plots. And if you want to put these in a single command, it starts getting clumsy and long, especially if you want different colors and markers. And you may want to generate a basic figure now and add a line plot to it later. So the default with plot is if you use the plot statement, it will clear the existing line plots and return you to a blank screen. But here's the key point. You can override this if you use hold on. And what hold on will do is it will say to MATLAB, keep what's currently in the figure. And when I use plot next time, add to the figure. So here we've got an example. And you'll see what I've done is I've first of all done this, a single plot statement. I'll mark it here, a single plot statement where I've plotted z against sine 2z. And I've done it in blue, and I've made the line width double. And then you'll notice the next command is hold on. And because I've said hold on, when I now add another plot statement, it will add that plot to the current figure. And then do another plot statement, and it will add that plot to the current figure. So I'm going to end up with three line plots. And I've also done legend. And Legend's quite clever because it recognizes that you've used this hold on. So it will match the first command, this sign 2z, with my first plot command. It will match the second entry in Legend with my second plot command. And it will match the third entry in Legend with the third plot command. And you'll see that when we produce the figure. So that's just to remind you what we've done. And now if we look at the figure, you can see I've got three line plots. And you'll see sine 2z is marked. This is the blue line. This polynomial is marked. This is the red line. And this f of z with circles, this is the green line. So basically, MATLAB has handled it all for you as long as you get comfortable with this syntax. Property editor. It can be awkward at times to construct a plot statement and a series of lines which make the plot appear the way you want to it in terms of what colors do you want, what line widths do you want, what ticks and labels and so forth. So you can post process your plot using a property editor. So if you go to this view tab, which you see in the figure, and then select property editor. And if you do that, it looks fairly similar, but you'll notice you might have things like property edit down at the bottom. And in essence, if you take the mouse and you put it over an object, so here, if I take the mouse and I put it over this blue line, if I then right click on that blue line, then I can access attributes such as the line width and the color and so on. And what we'll do is we'll demonstrate this live with MATLAB so you can see how easy it is. Okay. 
If you want to save the figure um, as a fig file, so there's a MATLAB file for editing later, then just go here to the file button and save it. And the default is a .fig, and if it's a .fig, you can always open a .fig and it will reappear as if you just plotted it, and you can then edit it as you please. Again, we'll demonstrate that um, later because that's easier. Subplots. Sometimes you want several figures on the same, fi or several axes on the same figure window, and the MATLAB tool for this is subplot. So here's an example: subplot two, three, four. So that says I want two rows of axes. That's from the two. I want three columns. That's from the three. So the normal MATLAB syntax: number of rows first, number of columns second, and the number of four says I want the fourth position. So that's the syntax, and if you use that command, the next time you use plot, then MATLAB will put it in the fourth subplot, where there are two rows and three columns. Now, an example will make that clear. So here's a statement. So you can see, I'm in figure two, and I've said I want to go into subplot two, three, four, and I'm going to plot one to ten. And so if you look, you will see that's what you get. The positions are one position, second position, third position, fourth position, fifth position, sixth position. You'll see I've got two rows and I've got three columns. So I've said two rows, three columns, fourth position. So when I do the plot statement, it's appeared in the fourth position. If I now do subplot two, three, three, then it's going to appear in the third position, which is there, and here you'll notice I've plotted part of a sign. How about exporting to Word or PowerPoint? The most important thing here is do not use screen capture, as this is messy, and it will give you something like this, and you've got all this junk along with it, and it's a horrible mess, and then you say, all right, how do I get rid of this junk, etc., etc. There's a far quicker an easier way of doing it. If you go to the edit button and select copy figure, the edit button is just here and it's got an option which says copy figure and then when you do that and simply paste you will get something like this. You'll see it cleans it all up for you automatically and it also gives it a nice white background which is better if you're trying to print it out because it's not going to waste all of your ink. So we'll demonstrate that as well. So now let's go to some live demonstrations and show you where the code is so you can do this yourself. So if you look at the code MATLAB Basics 6A, first ones you see I've generated X and Y, the same length. I said I'm going to use figure one. I've cleaned it before I start and then I go plot X, Y and there it appears. So you can try these commands yourself if you copy this. I can change the color to red. I can say use figure two and do it in green. Use figure three and use blue crosses. This next one down here shows you title, X label and Y label. So you'll see if I run this block of commands, then you see it said title is tangent curve. The Y label is tan X, the X label is X, and I've done the color as magenta. This next one, doing the polynomial, there's you'll see the block of code, I've put it into figure 2 and you see there's the title, there's the polynomial x squared plus 3x plus 2, it's in a red dotted line, it's quite thin. What if I want to overlay plots? So you see here I've got this command where I've got x1, y1, x2, y2, so if I run this block of command, and there, I've made that figure window maybe a bit too small, and you can see what's going on. I've got the two line plots, I've got the legend statement, I've added some text into my graph in a particular position because that might be helpful, I've changed the colour of the title. So all the options are there so you can go through these lines one at a time. What if I want to overlay plots with hold on? So here I'll just do that block first. So I just do that block, you'll see I've only got a single line because all I've done is go plot z sine 2z blue line width 2, so it's made the line width double thickness. I can now, because I've done this hold on, I'll just make sure I've done it, I can now add another plot. And you'll see it's added it and it's changed the axes in order to fit both plots. I can now add a third plot. And again you'll see it's changed the axes to fit this third plot and then I can add my title, legend and labels at the end. 
Right, what if you want to export figures to Word? So if you want to export this, the thing you do is you go um, edit and then you'll see copy figure. And if I copy that figure, just like that, now I just need to go paste anywhere. So let me, um, this is going to be somewhat slow, but I can probably uh, do a new a new blank presentation just so you can see so I've got a new presentation there so now if I just do paste so control paste and there you can see my figure has appeared and I can resize it as I want so it's as simple as that you just use that edit window and then where's the rest of the MATLAB windows gone just use that edit window and just go copy figure. Now the other alternatives is you can go file and you can go save as. Now if you do that you'll see you get a number of options. I can do it as a MATLAB figure dot fig which I can open again from MATLAB and continue editing or I've got all these other options depending upon what I want to do with it next. So I'm going to cancel that and we'll carry on. What about subplots? So here's the commands for doing the subplots if you want to see those and there you see the two subplots have appeared and I don't think I'll bother with that last one I think you've probably seen enough for now so the commands are there in this MATLAB basic 6a MATLAB basic 6b um, so oops apologies I've gone the wrong way there so you can open those and run through them in your own time so conclusions we've demonstrated the ease with which MATLAB can produce good quality plots for display. It's easy to control line colors, thicknesses and marker types. It's easy to overlay several line plots. Easy to add labels, titles and legends. Convenient editor for pro processing and easy to save or export into any convenient format. And I did forget to show you the property editor so perhaps I'll just do that quickly before we finish. I'll just choose an arbitrary figure. So here for example there's my figure and if I go view property editor and uh, okay it takes a few minutes to open All right, I'll need to make this bigger so you can see so now you can see there's the property editor button there so for example if I select this line here okay now you'll notice I can change things like the line style uh, I can make it five thick see it's gone a lot thicker or I can change the marker type and say I want hexagrams. Now you can't see that because they're so small. I can change the marker size. I can change the color. So what color would you like? Should we have that green there? Okay. Did that, did that listen to me? Okay. So the key thing is you can pick the lines and you can change things as you want. Okay. You can also pick things like the title and you can change things like the font. So at the moment, you can see it's Helvetica bold size 18. Let's make it size 9. A bit silly. And now you can see it's changed. So in this property editor, you've got a lot of flexibility to post-process if you find that easier. And if you, once you like what you've done, you go File, you go Save As, save it as a fig file, and you can always change it again later. Okay. That's the end.